Right, thanks for that, Chris. Yeah, so, my name is Ian, and I'm going to introduce you to the fascinating world of hydroponics. I'm not an expert, and everything you will see is purely self taught and a lot of experimenting. But once I got started, I just got hooked and then went on trying lots of different ideas and techniques. But like all experiments, not everything was a success, but it's fun to keep trying and getting results. I've only been doing this for the last four years. So hopefully you'll enjoy the presentation and find it helpful and try things out for yourself. So basically, the beginner's guide to hydroponics. What is hydroponics? Well, hydro... <coughs> and... Hydro means water, um, ponics means toil, which means the roots are basically too tired to do anything. They don't have to go and forage for nutrients like they do in soil. You're growing plants in water without soil or compost. It's not new. It started in about 1627, became popular in 1937, and is very much popular still today. Plants do not grow in water alone. They need nutrients to help the growth. Different types of hydroponics. There's three basic different types. One is the deep water, or what they call passive, which is still water with added nutrients. And this is the one that I use most commonly. Aeroponics, or active, is water with a pump system to circulate nutrients and oxygen through the roots. And then you've got aquaponics, which is a pump system, and it circulates the use of a fish tank using the fish waste as the nutrients. Some systems use lighting to aid plant growth through stages during out of season. The deep water system indoors, it's very easy and simple to set up. You can use a lot of recycled materials, cheap to buy nutrients, it's very fast growing. You can grow out of season, controlled environment. There's no ground pests like slugs or snails, no above pests like birds, caterpillars, cats, etc. No constant watering, you can go on holiday and leave it. No weeding and it uses 10 times less water than soil outside using hoses and watering cans. The problem is that you do need some sort of space, so either if you've got a greenhouse or if you're growing things in house on a windowsill, you'd have to grow things small, like herbs or some lettuce or tomatoes. <clears throat> nutrients, there's a variety of nutrients available in the market. There's a liquid form or a solid form. I recommend the liquid form, it's the one I use, it's much easier. It's just a little dose into your water rather than mixing uh, solid forms, which takes quite a long time to dilute. The important aspect is to get the ratio correct in the pH. The pH is the acid or the alkaline scale where water is normally around 7. Most plants or veg prefer an acid type around 5.5 to 6.5. Buying the correct food in the ratio, you wouldn't have a problem but you can buy a pH meter to check your water very cheaply. It's very economical. You only need seven milliliters of nutrients to five liters of water. So one bottle of nutrients, if you're buying it in a five liter or two and a half liter container, will last a long time. The nutrient contents, macronutrients play a large part of plant growth and acquire large amounts. Your nitrogen, your phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium. Your micronutrients play an important part, but in smaller quantities, which is your sulfur, calcium, iron, and zinc. So don't forget that this is a science. Um, what you do is when you buy a bag of compost, you will have all the ingredients in your compost. Um, but when you're doing with hydroponics, what you're doing is adding all these nutrients into it. So it is a science. But when you buy a bag of compost at the garden center, do you check the bag for what it's made up of? Or do you just go for the price? It will give you an indication of how long the nutrients will last, possibly three months or maybe four months. After that, when it loses its strength, you will need to add extra food to the compost. The final theory part is that seeds and seedlings growing outdoors are at the most vulnerable to pests. So you'll get your little lettuce seedlings picked away by birds and whatever. You can bring them on indoors hydroponically. Once they've got established, you can then transfer them outside into the soil. Sure, you can do this with small pots or trays with compost, but the looking after them, the constant watering, the thinning out, etc. You can go away on holiday and they will just basically look after themselves. So what we're doing here is starting from seed. In this instance, we've got a mixture of tomato, lettuce, Brussels sprout, cabbage, cauliflower and kale. They're just sitting in rock wool cubes in water alone with no nutrients. It took nine days to germinate. 
The interesting part was that 100% of all seeds germinated, which I didn't find in the compost. And what I try and do is when I'm doing the hydroponics is I do a comparison. So whatever I grow in hydroponics, I also grow in compost and just see what the comparison is as it goes along. Nine weeks later, this is what happens. This is our Brussels sprouts, cabbages, cauliflowers. 11 weeks later, thriving. This is nine weeks with the cherry tomatoes. 11 weeks, you can see all the flowers. Absolutely blooming there. This is a root system from the baby gem lettuce. As you can see in the neck cup, the roots into the, the box, which we'll go into in a minute. Recycled materials. Now, you can use anything, um, any pots or um, containers. This is just a two and a half litre juice bottle uh, and an old sock. Uh, the reason of the sock is so that we can cover the bottle and it has to be a kind of dark sock because we don't want any sunlight getting into your water. If you allow sunlight coming into your water, algae will grow and you don't want algae in your system. So here we have with uh, a few inventions here. This is a, a box that I've got and it's a, a root veg. This is actually carrots. And you think, can you grow root veg uh, hydroponically? Well, the answer is yes. Um, these are carrots. You can grow potatoes, which I haven't tried yet, but I'm going to. Um, this is cherry tomatoes and this is a strawberry. Uh, the strawberry I wasn't successful with. Uh, just went into hibernation and didn't do anything. So I'm going to retry a strawberry some other way, uh, see if I've got more success. So here's the carrots starting to grow. This is the root system of the carrots, and you can see all the carrots coming down here. This is my cucumbers, and I've got four of them growing here. These are uh, 45 litre containers. And if you see here, this was a reinvention that I did. It's a biodegradable straw with a little marking and what that is, is basically it just acts as a float. At the end of that, you can put either a little ball of uh, cork or a bit of polystyrene or something, just act as a float. And obviously when that goes down, as the nutrients, as the plants suck up all the water and the nutrients, this will go down. And once it reaches that black mark there, then it, it needs a top up. These I found needed about one litre of top up, possibly once a week, depending on the heat and the temperature that you've got. This is 10 weeks, these are my four cucumbers. And as you can see, there's the flowers with the little baby cucumbers forming. And these are 13 weeks, beautiful big cucumbers ready for picking. This was my first experiment, uh, just happened to call our melony. It was a Gallia melon. Um, I took the seeds out of a melon that we, we had from a supermarket. And I didn't bother washing the, the seeds or drying them out, I just Put them in with the mush and everything and what I found was she grew three times faster than uh, sisters and brothers in compost. Unfortunately well, ignorance I didn't realize because I'm used to growing cucumbers and it's the old female variety where they will pollinate themselves. Melons don't have that you have actually got to pollinate melons. If you're growing melons outside then obviously your bees and your butterflies will do that for you. I had to manually do it with a, a tiny little paintbrush, which was a bit of a nuisance, but we did get there in the end. And as you can see, there's the Gallia melons there. They grew to about the size of a football, and absolutely delicious. This is the root system of the melon, and just a fascinating uh, thing to look at. So what I did was I dried that out, and then hung it up, and it just became a talking point of everybody asking, what the heck is that? This is just images of the hydroponic farming, just to show you how vast this actually is. And it's just, it's humongous. There's fields and fields and fields. These are all tomatoes. And you can see the size of that, it's just huge. So basically, if you be aware of your space that you have, indoors, greenhouse, conservatory, or polytunnel, start small, small containers with small herbs, maybe some small lettuce. You don't need to spend a fortune and use recycled materials as much as possible. But most importantly, have fun and enjoy good, clean, healthy fruit and veg. And if you'd like further information, you can contact that. Okay. Thank you very much. For that, Ian. Um, so that was the, uh, the the basic introduction there. Um, 
what uh, what I'm going to do now, I've got a, a, a video where we, we sort of see that again, but, but show you around uh, how, how Ian's got it all set up. Um, okay, I, again, another caveat there. I was meant to say that the sound wasn't so good. I don't quite know what happened with my, uh, my microphone there. I did take my nice camera down with my nice microphone, but forgot the card. I had a very... This, this whole workshop has been plagued by forgetfulness and, and silly mistakes. However, uh, I, I hope you uh, you found that interesting. Before we go to the question and answer, has anyone tried hydroponics in the past? Yeah, or Fiona has. Do you want to say anything about your experience there? Um, hi, actually, hi, Ian. Um, my name is actually Joan. I'm just borrowing somebody else's Zoom. So, um, yeah, I, I've. Um, heard Ian talk before. I live quite near Ian, so okay. Ian um, got me started on it. So I've got quite a few things growing in my greenhouse. I've run out of space. That's my problem. Um, and yeah, I've had some really good results. I've had less success than Ian, but I haven't got such a big space. I don't have a polytunnel or a bigger space, but it's been great. I've really enjoyed. It's been fascinating, um, and I've actually grown stuff. Tried to compare things growing in the hydroponics with um, my husband has been growing things out in the garden um, and the hydroponics certainly have taken off and grown much quicker um, than the stuff in the garden. Although I have got a couple of questions, well Ian probably knows my questions, I've, I've had a couple of problems as well but on the whole um, I've got cherry tomatoes that are um, just, just going everywhere, just waiting for them to ripen now. Yeah, so I've really enjoyed doing it. Good. Um, so you, do you want to uh, ask your question now? Um, well, okay, I can mention this to you, I've got two, well, one problem I've had is I've got courgettes growing and um, I used some older um, so, um, opaque tubs and, and then covered them with newspaper and black um, bags to try and keep the, the sun out or the light out, but the water has gone quite mouldy. It's gone a bit smelly and dirty inside. And some of the courgettes have gone a bit yellow and soft. And I'm just wondering whether the tubs, I've now, as you know, Ian, I've actually bought some, they're upcycled, really thick black tubs. So I'm going to try it with those instead. Maybe that's what the problem was. Yeah, it could be. I mean, you know, you could you could change the water and then change the tubs. Um, it's difficult sometimes. I mean, I, I, I even had uh, tubs that I completely covered and they got green uh, algae growing it as well. It just, it just needs a tiny little bit of light somewhere to get in right. and, and then you get the algae. Um, so changing the water would be good or changing your tub. Um, so hopefully that should solve it. But also check your pH as well. I don't know if you've, if you've got a pH. Right, I, can, I, I can lend you one and you can okay. try it out. Um, normally, I don't have a problem with the pH very much, but uh, you know it could have a, a, a something to do with it. So, yeah. changing the water in the tub would certainly help. Well, I've I've done. I have changed the water. It's the same tub, but I have changed the water so, and I've I've removed quite a lot of the leaves, and I've removed all the kind of salt the the um, the actual courgettes that have gone a bit yucky. I've got. I've, I mean, I've already had several meals from them, so. Um, it's not all lost, so I'll let you know how that goes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Good. Thanks for that, Ian. Just just to answer someone's question on on the chat there. If you if you have questions, add them into the chat. I'll go through them uh, one at a time. But just to uh, yeah, I will be leaving the video up on. Well, I'll be redoing the video and putting that up on YouTube. Um, I'll uh, that that will be posted around social media. But I'll I'll also try and remember to send that in a link to everyone who's on the the mailing list now as well. Um, uh, Fiona, just uh, well, Fiona. What what was your name again? Sorry, Joan. <laughs> Joan, okay. Um, so there's a rule, I don't know if you know, but if you have a musical instrument in the background, you play us out. Oh, <laughs> no way. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll, we'll go for the first question that I get to, which is how often do you check the pH and uh, add nutrients? Right. The pH <clears throat> doesn't, it, I don't really check it very often. Um, normally, if I just get a, a slight problem with anything, then I check the pH. Uh, in most cases, the, the, the food that you, the, or the nutrients that you add, 
kind of take care of themselves. But it is worth checking, as long as you can get it below 7 to about 5.5 to 6.5. So you can get a pH meter for around about uh, 10 pounds um, and you can you can check it. Um, if you do have a problem with your pH, you can buy uh, a product which is called pH up or pH down, which you can add into your nutrients and it will level out your pH balance. Um, I've never needed to use it yet, so I've just got two bottles sitting in my cupboard that I've never used. Um, they've always been, been quite good. As far as adding uh, or topping up nutrients, depends on the size of the tub you have and what you're growing. Um, if Um, the next question we got was from Joe, and that is, what length of route do you leave above the water level to avoid drowning? Right, so the net cup uh, that you saw um, is about three, four inches deep. And what happens is that, as I say, the roots have got two, uh, two types of roots. The bottom roots are the ones that go into the water, and they're the ones that suck up all the nutrients. And the top roots that come out the sides are what they call the air roots. And you've got to keep them out of the water. So when you're filling up the, the tub, don't fill it right up to the top of the net cup, otherwise it will drown. The, that's the other reason is to, if you leave the air roots, if when I said that you could transfer hydroponically to, to the ground, is if you took that plant out of the, the net cup, the air roots at the top, these are the ones that will find their way through the soil in the compost to find nutrients. So it's, it's keeping the water roots and the air roots separate so you don't drown the plant. Thank you for that. Does that answer your question there, Joe? Happy? Yeah, thanks. So sh should I be able to see the difference between the two? You will, yeah, because the ones that come out the bottom will be all uh, long and, and, and stringy and soggy, and the ones that come out the side will be a lot firmer and a bit thicker. Right. So you'll, you'll notice the difference between the two, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, uh, next, could you do this in a house if you've hardly any space? That's from Galaxy S10 Plus. Yeah, sure. I mean, you, you can grow on a kitchen windowsill and in small containers, you can, but it, it depends on how much space you've got. Uh, you can grow herbs, basil, coriander, uh, things like that. You can grow the, the, the baby gem lettuce or uh, if you're trying to grow other things um, just trying to think obviously cabbages cauliflowers and things will be too big for your kitchen window so cherry tomatoes you could possibly grow but again you need room for them cascading over the top um, so it just depends on how much room you've got and what you want to grow do you have any follow-up to to that question are you still with us can I just add very quickly, I've had success with beans. They've been really successful, both broad beans and runner beans. Okay, thank you for that. Ne next question. Uh, I mean, I, I, I just say something. I was quite surprised how successful everything was on Ian's setup. And uh, like he says, you, you couldn't really grow cucumbers. I was amazed at how big that, how, and how healthy that plant <laughs> was. But I remember you saying as well, you, you had some, some things growing from a hanging basket as well. I guess you could do something like that, hydroponic hanging basket in your kitchen maybe? I don't know. You could. Uh, the trouble is it's uh, how do you suspend a bucket of water um, uh, safely? <laughs> Airfully. Um, yeah, um, that's that's always a problem. Uh, so, yeah, if, unless you've got a shelf that you could, you could possibly put the, the bucket on and then let things cascade down, um, you know, if 
say in, in your greenhouse you've maybe got a shelf or, a, or some kind of uh, structure that you can put, put a bucket on the top and then just let them cascade down it'd be great I mean I found what I did with cucumbers I I, uh, I just got the idea of the hanging baskets because trying to train plants to go up the way when they don't really want to go up the way I thought we'll just let gravity do its own thing and just put cucumbers in hanging baskets and they just grew down so I didn't have to bother caning them, stringing them up, tying them up and then they, they fall down when the, the, the fruit starts to get heavy so I just thought I'd let gravity do its own thing and put them in a basket and let them hang down and it became successful so you could do the same with a bucket on a shelf yeah can you use a, this is from Daniela, can you use a uh, water aerator, the one that fish tank uses? Yes. Uh, you, you, basically, that's uh, hydroponic systems do use a lot of these um, same same pump systems. And uh, they, they, you can get submersible ones or you can get uh, ones that sit outside the tank. And you can have a, a, like a hose attachment that comes off the pump into the container. Or as I say, you can have the submersible pump that you do use in fish tanks. Uh, as long as it aerates the water or makes oxygen and it circulates the, the water and the nutrients in the tub, then uh, sometimes you will get better results. Uh, I found what I did as an experiment as well, that I had two tubs, this was last year, I had one tub with uh, cucumbers and no pump. I had another tub, exactly the same size tub, exactly the same cucumbers planted at the same time with no pump. And there was no difference in growth. So um, I don't know, it's, it's just one of these things, but I did try it. And the, the oxygen from the pump didn't make any difference to the, the growth of the cucumbers. I assume, from my total layperson's knowledge, that would would it make a difference? Because the the industrial ones seem to grow long, like along the way. So maybe a pump will come in useful if you're growing uh, more horizontal than than just simple single tubs. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's something I've never tried horizontally, but yeah, you can. I mean, there are systems. Uh, that you can you can make with um, like drainage pipes, uh, four inch drainage pipes, or uh, I think you can do it with three inch or three and a half inch drainage pipe, and you can have the water flowing through, uh, and then a pump system which circulates the water back up and then back through the pipe, and then you have the plants planted inside holes drilled through the pipe, so that the roots can get uh, the, the water circulated through. But again, it's, it depends how big and how complicated you want to go. Um, you know, there's lots of complicated systems out there. There's lots of very expensive systems out there. But if you just want to try it for a, a simple basic technique for your own house, you know, then pumps. No, oh, good. Okay. Uh, I dare say as well that if you contact Transition Sterling, our technical coordinator, Kirill, will definitely be able to make you any pump to any specification you so <laughs> desire.
any follow up there, Matt? No, that's great. Really appreciate the input. Thank you. Okay. Um, the, the messages keep coming in. Um, <clears throat> sounds like uh, where do you buy supplies? Just answered that one. Um, uh, oh, Galaxy had to go. Um, I'm sorry. It's been wonderful. Please send. I, I will send in some links out and some of the products there that Ian's mentioned as well. I'll make sure that I uh, get those written down and they'll be uh, they'll be sent out too. Um, what is the rock? What is the rock wool you use? Uh, I guess that's just a hydroponic rock wool that you you like you say you can get from the hydroponic shop in Broxburn or online. I assume if you if you uh, do a, a search engine a, an Agotia search for example um, yeah Rockwell is basically just uh, it, it's crushed rocks it's made into fiber strands and it, it does have a certain amount of minerals in it uh, but they don't use the insulation that you get for your house uh, it just it's totally different stuff altogether yeah um, and then uh, Alison says there must be a way to grow vertical uh, if there's a solid wall. Um, there, there absolutely is. I guess that's using the pump system like you were mentioning earlier. Um, and there is a, a, a video I saw on YouTube as well of, uh, of an industrial um, hydroponic farm and, and they're growing in columns just like column after column yeah. after column. Um, so yeah, absolutely it can be done. Um, but uh, again, I think that's like Ian was saying there, that's maybe something once you've, you've experimented and, and dipped your toes in a little bit. But, but if, if it's something you, you have a go at, please send us pictures and, and let us know how it goes. Got, uh, they have a very interesting setup in Disney Epcot. If you search living off the land, Disney Florida, hydroponics, aquaponics, plus lots of other things. Thank you for that heads up. We'll have, I'll, uh, I'm Lynn's McCann. We'll, we'll definitely have a look at that. Um, please, please do say what, Pam? Please do say. Well, at the time, it was this discussion over whether you could say what the name of the shop is or not. Yeah. But I don't understand why, but I've looked it up and it's in there now. It's Premier Hydroponics, I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> Other hydroponic I mean, shops like are available. It's a commercial thing. Yeah. This is a community. I think we're fine. I, I think it's right. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Well, it's actually it's a, it's a father and uh, his three sons. I think run run the shop. So, I say they're very they're very helpful. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, what else can can you reuse the rock wool? That's a good question from Matt. Right. Well, it, when I first started, uh, I did, uh, and I think um, uh, Joan was uh, had the same problem as well as when we, we did. I think Joan planted some seeds, uh, which didn't take, and the the rock wool became a bit kind of mouldy and things. And she was asking if she could reuse. Afterwards, when uh, I got a bit more information, then no, you're not supposed to use the rock wool again. So once you've used it once, um, you just basically discard it. Is that compostable? Well, the the rock wool itself, because it's it's fibrous rock. Um, it, it will go back into the ground, um, but it would completely break down as much as what the core will with your uh, coconut husks. Okay. Um, on that note, can you reuse the water? I would say no. Uh, once once you've used, once you've done the water, I would just. Uh, but the, the the thing about it is, just pour it into your uh, garden because the food nutrients that are in your hydroponic water, you can use it for watering your. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have any other questions or anything else they'd like to add? Maybe your own experiences or um, perhaps. Why, why you wanted to come along in the first place? No? Okay, um, that's fair enough. Uh, before, you, this, this we, we are, I guess, finished with the hydroponics thing. I'd like to um, 